I'm Patrick Trano. I'm a professor at the University of Illinois. And today I'd like to say just a little bit about herbicide resistance and different mechanisms of resistance. So when a weed has resistance in your field, there's two categories of mechanisms by which that weed can be resistant. One category is target site resistance. And what that refers to is there's been a typically a mutation in the gene that encodes the target site of the herbicide. And that mutation in that target site prevents the herbicide from binding to that enzyme, binding to its target site, and therefore the herbicide can't do its job. That's target site resistance. Uh, the other type of resistance is a broad category of resistance, which we call non-target site resistance. And what happens with non-target site resistance typically is the plant prevents the herbicide from reaching its target site. And the most common way by which plants do that is by evolving the ability to more rapidly detoxify the herbicide. So what does this all mean for you as a farmer? Target site resistance is very predictable in the sense that if we have target site resistance to, let's say, a group two herbicide, chances are pretty good that that plant is gonna be resistant to all other, or at least some other group two herbicides. But if it only has target site resistance to group two herbicides, it will not be resistant to herbicides that have other sites of action. This is in contrast to non-target site resistance where because the plant is able to, for example, metabolize a, a group two herbicide, it might be able to metabolize a group one herbicide or a group 27 herbicide. It's much less predictable. And that's the real challenge is with target site resistance, it's only affecting herbicides with the same site of action, and it can be relatively easily managed by rotating to different sites of action. With non-target site resistance, we have less ability to predict other herbicides by which it might be resistant to. And therefore, simply rotating sites of action is generally not very effective for managing non-target site resistance. And a big concern moving forward is that historically, particularly in our broadleaf weeds such as water hemp and palmer amaranth, historically, resistance was due to target site mechanisms. Increasingly, we're seeing more and more cases of non-target site resistance in these weeds. So we have to continue to worry about target site resistance. It has not gone away, but we also have to worry about non-target site resistance, which is making our chemical management of our herbicides much more challenging and really emphasizing the need for using non-chemical strategies. There are several different non-chemical strategies that you might be able to use depending on your cropping system, your economic situation, and, and lots of factors. But you know, some obvious things are tillage under certain circumstances could be a viable strategy, non-chemical strategy. Crop rotation is an excellent strategy. Uh, if you're growing a crop with the same life cycle year after year, summer annual crop followed by a summer annual crop, you're creating an ideal environment for summer annual weeds. So breaking that up with a winter annual crop or a perennial crop is an extremely effective weed management strategy. Cover cropping, uh, harvest weed seed control, uh, those are some, a few of the options that might be available to you as non-chemical strategies to help reduce your reliance on herbicides, help reduce the amount of selection for resistance that you're creating in that field.